Oh, I went looking for my phone and it's like filming the things. God damn it. Hey everyone, welcome back. So, I'm that friend in the group that reads a lot of books. And so people come to me asking for recommendations a lot and I generally tend to give the same recommendations over and over and over again. They differ depending on who the person is, obviously. So like, I'm not gonna give a guy who has no interest in romance the Anna and the French Kiss series or like someone who has no interest in high fantasy. I'm not gonna give them like a five book long extensive fantasy world series. But I do have general recommendations that I tend to give everyone because they're just good books and so I'm gonna talk you through those today. So I've got a couple of different genres and categories that I am gonna take you through. I've got a couple for each so if you have already read one that's okay. You can try the other one. If you've read those then you're probably a bit more experienced in reading that genre than I am. So and you can probably make your own recommendations from that. So let's begin. So the first category I have for you today is contemporary and that kind of encompasses like romance and young adult kind of love stories basically is my interpretation of contemporary. So the first series that I have to recommend is the Anna and the French Kiss series by Stephanie Perkins. Now if you haven't heard about this book series and you're a part of booktube or if you read and you like romance and contemporary you should read these. I didn't think I would like these, but I think I flew through each of them in one sitting. They are so good, incredibly addictive. I find with contemporaries the writing style isn't like the best and it's not like the most amazing writing that I've ever read and it's not like works of art, but they're just incredibly fun stories to read. I find that I relate a lot with the characters in these books, probably because I am a young female adult of this age group going through these struggles, so. Yes, I thoroughly recommend the Adder and the French Kiss series. They are quite a good series and they all sort of intertwine. They're separate stories. This one follows Anna when she goes to a school in Paris. This one follows Lola uh, struggling with a relationship that she has with the guy who lives next door. And this one is about Isla and she also goes to the school that's in Paris. And that this last one really links all three of them together. So it's not necessary that you read them all in order but it's good if you do because that way you can get like the full experience of the series. The next contemporary reading recommendation I have for you is just anything by Colleen Hoover. I've read three of her books so far and they're all just amazing. I just love all of them. Again, not the best written. I think I started reading Without Merit and was just like this reads like a fan fiction but it's addictive and I again read this one in one sitting. They're just good books. They're fun, they're full of like emotional ups and downs. Again, you can relate to the characters, they're just good. Read these. And finally, I have probably my favorite contemporary book of all time, I think, and it is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I love this book. I think I, this was probably one of the first contemporary books that I sort of actually read when I started reading again. And I just connected so much with the main character of this because she is a fangirl who writes fan fiction. Like I don't write fan fiction, but I sort of understand the desire to immerse yourself into other worlds and Fangirl's just amazing. I have no other words for how good this book is. Like I have two copies. I own two copies of this book, that's how much I love it. This one I got, Jason got me and it's signed by the author. Thanks Jason. But yes, I love this book and just really anything by Rainbow Rowell in general. I think I just prefer this one over all of the other ones. Yeah. The next category I have is fantasy. Now this encompasses a lot of high fantasy books and general fantasy books as well. So it's kind of just all mixed in. So there's like a commitment series and then there's like a really big book and there's some really little books. So I also will never ever recommend anyone to read Harry Potter, basically. It's just one of my rules. I think at this stage, if anyone hasn't read Harry Potter, it's because they don't want to. And so if someone asks me for a book recommendation, I'm not gonna say, hey, you should read Harry Potter because the chances are either they already have or they just don't want to and that's fine. You do you, you do you. Like you're missing out on a good series, but but you do you, that's fine. So the series that I without fail recommend to anyone who actually asks me for a book recommendation, whether or not they like fantasy or not, I tell them to read The Name of the Wind series by Patrick Rothfuss because I just, this series is just encompasses everything that is a good book. The writing is amazing, the characters are interesting, the storyline is complex and amazing, the world is built right, it's just all good. I am so excited for the third one, if it ever comes out. Yeah, oh, that's the only thing. If you are gonna read this series, maybe like wait till the third one comes out 
or wait till the announcement for the third one coming out is going to be because you're going to finish this one and be like, well, what do I do with my life now? Because without fail, everyone that I recommended this to has had that feeling. So this is a really, 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 really good series and I highly recommend it to every single person, regardless of what genre you like reading, because I can almost guarantee you will like this series. So the next series that I'm going to recommend is, of course, the Accord of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J Maas. Now, I wouldn't recommend this one to everyone. This is more like if you like an addictive, fast-paced kind of romance character-driven story. Definitely got a lot of fantasy elements. It is a fantasy series. They have, it's got lots of like, like fae and witches and just bizarre creatures and it's a really really good series. I think the world is developed quite nicely and the progression of emotions from the first book to the second book is just incredible and I just I, I love it. I just I just love it and I think everyone else that I've recommended it to has also loved it as far as I know. Again this series definitely isn't for everyone. It's a very romance driven series so it's definitely fantasy but it's not kind of like a fantasy for everyone so if you're not into romance and just general angsty love then I wouldn't read this series but you should just read it anyway because it's just good. The next series I have to recommend is a bit of a commitment series, pre-warning. Also it's urban fantasy which kind of generally encompasses our world but with fantasy elements in it. So and it is any of Cassandra Clare's work basically. I've got the first ones of The City of Bones, Clockwork Angel and Lady Midnight. And these are the first books in each of the three series that she's written, and they're all in the Shadowhunter realm. There's about 13 books in this series all up, and there is a specific order that you should read them, which is the chronological order in which they came out and were released. This series is really great. It follows uh, a young girl who discovers that she is a shadow hunter, which is someone who hunts demons. That's, and that's the City of Bones series. Then you've got Clockwork Angel is about the same lot of families and the same world, but it's set in the 1800s, I think. And then you've got Lady Midnight, which is the series that you can't read separate to everything else. You have to read everything else before you read this series, but it is set, I think, eight years after this series finishes. So it's a very complex world. It's a bit of a commitment. If you're not up for a commitment, I wouldn't recommend diving into them, but they're a really great urban fantasy series, and I would definitely recommend them. To anyone who is ready for that commitment. The next category I have for you is sci-fi. Now I don't read a lot of sci-fi personally, I'm sort of picking up a bit more of it here and there, but it's not something that I commonly delve into. The ones that I have read are quite mainstream, so you've probably already heard of them before, and if you haven't then you're about to. <laughs> First uh, series that I recommend in sci-fi is The Illuminate Chronicles by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. These are a basically a kind of thriller sci-fi chase kind of series and they're written not in a typical novel format so they're made up of different files so you've got like emails and different chat rooms interesting illustrations where the words are kind of on the page it's just really fun to read because it isn't written like a typical novel it is quite easy to get through um, it reads quite quickly. I think I read both of these in like two days. So they're really fun. The characters are amazing in these. It's definitely kind of a character driven story, but also with the mystery of what's unraveling because you're reading the files of this, these events that have happened. So I really enjoyed this series and I have recommended them to a couple of people, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet as if they've, if they've read them. So if you do read these, let me know what you think of them because I think they're amazing and I think some other people do too, so let me know. And the other sci-fi that I have to recommend is The Martian by Andy Weir. The Martian, if you haven't heard of it or if you haven't seen the movie with Matt Damon, it is about a guy who gets stuck on Mars and it just goes through his story about how he survives on Mars. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It took me a while to get through. But once the story started picking up, I started reading it a lot more and I think I smashed it out in like half a day. Uh, this book was really good. It's quite um, heavy with the science terminology but he writes it in a way that makes it really easy to understand if you don't understand science which I don't. I do but not to this extent like all of the astrophysics and stuff like that so this is a really good book and everyone that I know that's read it has really really loved it as well. I've also had the audiobook for this one is really good so if you're not into reading physical books then the audiobook would be a good one to pick up. Next category I've got is picture books, which I guess isn't for everyone, and I don't read a lot of them myself, but I have two that I really love. The first one being 
The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. It's quite a long picture book, about 200 pages long. It follows the story of a porcelain rabbit who gets thrown into a lot of different places and it's just a very heartwarming, lovely, humble story. I cry every time I read this book and I just, I just love it. It's just a beautiful book. I think everybody should read this. Regardless of what you like reading, read this book, please. And the second one I have, I don't actually have a copy of yet, but I have read it and it is the most like, like I read this book when I was standing in a bookshop with my friend and I nearly cried in the middle of the bookshop and it is not quite narwhal. And this book is just so beautiful and it centers a lot around acceptance of who you are and being different is okay and I think it's just a lovely story for kids and even adults to read and experience because it's just such a beautiful book and I love it so much. And the last category I have for y'all is manga. Now again not everyone's cup of tea I understand that but I personally love reading manga. I haven't done it in so long because it's just so hard to get a hold of manga. It's just so expensive and there's a lot of it and so I don't read a lot of it, but the ones that I have read I do love. So if you're after a manga series, I recommend Orange. This series follows a group of kids who themselves in the future have sent letters to them in the past to sort of fix up some mistakes that they made as children. Uh, this is a beautiful series. It is such a good story. I cried like a baby. There is an anime as well, but I haven't watched it and I'm not sure how good it is. But I know that the mangas are amazing, so you should read them. And those are the books that I generally go to when I recommend books to people. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you've read any of these in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts about them because I know that I love them, but does anyone else? Who knows? But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye!